Hare Krishna. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 7, text 39, chapter 2. two. Irani Kashipu, the king of the demons. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Ya Vichayesha Vijati Dam Abhyayo Ya Eva Rakshati Ipalumpate Cha Ya Tashabalaha Kritanam Ahur Ishitush Characharam Nigraha Sangrahi Prabho Ya Icha Yesha Sri Jati Dhamma Bhayo Ya Ibarakshati Avalumpati Chaya Ashabala Kritinam Ahurishitush Characharam Nigraha Sangrahi Prabhu Yai Chayesha Shvijitam Avayo Yai Varakshati Ivalumpati Chaya Ashabala Kritanam Mahu Ishitush Chara Charam Nigraha Sangrahi Prabhu Yai Chayesha Sri Jati Dhamma Vyayo Yai Varakshati Avalumpati Chaya Tashavala Kritanam Mahuri Shitush Chara Charam Nikraha Sangri Prabhu Ah, 
by anyone, Isha, the Supreme Controller, Sri Jati, creates, Idam, this material world, Avyaya, remaining as he is, not having lost his own existence because of, of having created so many material manifestations. Yeah. 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 Who? Yeah. Iba. Iba. Indeed. Indeed. Rakshati. Rakshati. Maintains. Maintains. Avalumpate. And highlights. Cha. Cha. Also. also. Yeah. yeah. Who? Who? Tasya. Of him. Abalaha, O poor woman. Kridanam, the playing. Ahu, they say. Ishitu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Chara Acharam, moving and not moving. Nigraha, in destruction. Shangrahe, or in protection. Prabhu, fully able. Translation in purple by His Divine Grace the Boy Charanada in the Bhakti Vedanta Sri Prabhupada Ki. The boy addressed the women. Oh, weak women. Only by the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is never diminished, is the entire world created, maintained, and again annihilated. This is the verdict of the Vedic knowledge. This material creation, consisting of the moving and non-moving, is exactly like his plate thing. Being the Supreme Lord, he is completely competent to destroy and protect. <coughs> Please repeat. The boy addressed the women. Oh, weak women. Only by the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is never diminished, is the entire world created, maintained, and again annihilated. This is the verdict of the Vedic knowledge. This material creation, consisting of the moving and non-moving, is exactly like his plaything, being the Supreme Lord. He is completely competent to destroy and protect. In this regard, the queens might argue, if our husband was protected by the Supreme Personality of God had been in the womb, why is he not giving him protection now? To this question, the answer is, Ya Ichayesha Sri Jatitam Mavyayo Ya Iva Rakshati Ava Lumpati Chaya. One cannot argue with the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord is always free and therefore he can protect and he can also annihilate. He is not our order carrier. Whatever he likes, he will do. And therefore he is the Supreme Lord. The Lord does not create this material world at anyone's request. 
and therefore he can annihilate everything merely by his will. That is his supremacy. If one argues, why does he act in this way? The answer is that he can do so because he is supreme. No one can question his activities. If one argues, what is the purpose of this simple creation and annihilation? The answer is that to prove his omnipotence, he can do anything and no one can question him. If he were answerable to us concerning why he does something and why he does not, his supremacy would be curtailed. Om Agyantum Vidam Vashit Vidam Jalan Shalak Yatak Shudam Manitam Dina Tashmai Shudam Daya Shri Krishna Jaitanya Pavunityananda Shri Advaita Karata Shri Vashati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So here we're talking of the complete independence of the Lord. No one is equal to Krishna, no one is greater than him. This is the definition of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <clears throat> no one is equal, no one is greater. So he is completely independent to do as he likes. Whatever Krishna says is law, and whatever he desires has to be carried out by his will, Icha Shakti. That is his position. He is the lawmaker, he is the lawbreaker also. <coughs> and no one can do anything about it, even if you are Hiranyakashipu. <coughs> Uh, so this is the position of the Lord. When I come into this material world, I come in my spiritual potency, Krishna says. And therefore I'm not affected by the laws of this world. Even though I'm acting in this world, Arjuna said to Krishna, you're acting Krishna, you're fighting, or you've got a chariot, you, you, you're a Kutriya, you're accepting a designation as a Kutriya, and you're performing your duty as a Kutriya. <coughs> Krishna says, that may be so, but when I perform my activities, I don't become entangled. That's the difference. You perform your activities, like, but you become entangled. But I don't become entangled because I'm not aspiring for the fruits of my activities. Where everyone else, they're expecting some fruit from their activities. Therefore, they're bound up. But because I don't aspire for the fruits, because what do I need? I have everything. Krishna has everything. What does he need? So he doesn't aspire for the fruits of his activity. Therefore, he's not bound in this world. But the other living entities, they all have some desires for fruitive motivation, therefore they become bound by this activity. Uh, unless you know Krishna's nature, and then you can understand your own nature. What so Krishna says, if you understand this truth about me, how, when I come here I don't become entangled, you can become as free as me. If you act as Krishna acts without expecting the, resu re the fruit of your work, you'll become as free as Krishna. Mm. Example is given, the spider and he puts the magosh, the uh, spider web, he spins a web and all the little poker, all the mosquitoes, everything, they come, they get stuck on it. But the spider, he doesn't get stuck. 
So we may argue well, that's okay. Krishna can do that. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. He can come here and move around freely, but we're not the supreme personality of Godhead. <coughs> so, what is our position? And so the example is given that now this, all, the, all the little bugs are getting stuck on the web, but Krishna doesn't get stuck. And when the spider, he has babies, the babies immediately, they run all over the web also. They don't get stuck. Why? Like father, like son. They are good children. They are following Krishna's instructions. They are godly children. Then they become like Krishna. They have the same... Uh, mentality of not working for oneself but working for others for Krishna said then you become as free as Krishna even though you're in the material world but dealing with the material world but you become as free as Krishna if we understand this truth of Krishna we can also become as free as Krishna <coughs> <coughs> so who can know Krishna it's stated that who can know Krishna is the one who Krishna chooses to reveal himself to and no one else. That's the only way. Krishna is completely independent. Sarat. To whom he reveals himself, he can be understood. Others, they can never, never know him. <clears throat> so everything is dependent on the sweet will of Krishna. This is his position. So, <coughs> only to those whom he chooses. So, if, what, what makes Krishna choose one thing and not another? Pleasure. God loves pleasure. And the best pleasure is love. God loves the best love of, of all. He loves love. So, the person who has love, he conquers Krishna. <clears throat> so, when Krishna, is there, we say, Yasha Prashada, Bhagavad Prashada, we try to please the spiritual master because by pleasing him, Krishna is pleased. So, this is the purpose of the Vedas. It will always come to this point. That the pleasure of Vishnu is the purpose of the goal, whole goal of life. Because by his pleasure, anything can happen. Without his sanction of pleasure, no. So the idea is to please Vishnu, please Krishna. This, this is the way this program is set up. If we do that, then, not that Krishna will choose us, but we, we put ourselves in a favorable position that if Krishna chooses to reveal himself, he can reveal himself. <coughs> It's like the uh, Prabhupada was writing to one gentleman and he was talking about the TOVP. And he's saying, we've got this much money, we're building this much big temple, the government is giving, we have so much land. He, he was exaggerating a lot at that time. Of course, it's true, but now it's true so many years later. And uh, so Prabhupada was saying, we've got everything. And he said, now, when Lord Chaitanya's pleasure is there, it will be taken up. So even we have all the money, the land, the, everything is going, still you have to have the pleasure of the Lord. He has to be pleased to sanction it and allow it to happen. <clears throat> uh, so this is Krishna's position, Icha. Ya icha ya, this icha shakti. Icha means uh, what? Will, his will, his desire. <coughs> Translation says, Icha, by his will, and then in brackets, without being forced by anyone. Icha Shakti. So Krishna, he uses this Icha Shakti. He wants to create the universe. So simply by his desiring, he creates it. 
simplifies desire, he annihilates it. Simplifies desire, he maintains it. Teacher Shakti. <clears throat> so this is God's position. Not that he has to create, not that he has to annihilate, uh, not that he, he has to maintain either. But he is doing this. So for him, it says here, it's like a plaything. This whole world is like a plaything. The whole cosmic material manifestation, the creation, maintenance, destruction. It's just a plaything for Krishna. So, ultimately, the whole purpose of the creation is to give the rebellious living entities another chance to go back to Godhead. That's why the recreation takes place, to awaken all the jivas, bring them back, and try to get them back to devotional service again. <clears throat> uh, so Krishna agrees to do that. He doesn't have to, but he does. So that means he's got to create and, I, and, and, you know, and maintain. It's a big, big job. Uh, we've got a little project here. It's a lot of endeavor, a lot of expense, a lot of manpower, a lot of in effort is going into it. Uh, Krishna has to create the entire universe and maintain the entire universe. So how does he do it? He just, it's, he just dreams he's doing it, that's all. There's no, no sweat for him. He just has a dream. Not only is it a dream, he dreams it, but it's an amorous dream. So he's having a good time while he's creating. He's just, oh. He sees Roma Devi there, the goddess of fortune, and he, he casts his glance over to Roma Devi. So it's a, he has an intimate relationship. And that causes the whole creation and maintenance. And he's just enjoying it. He's the Yoga Nidra slumber. <laughs> We're working hard and sweating and worrying, worrying about disease and death and Krishna's just laying in his mystic slumber and everything is going on, creation, annihilation. And so this is the position of God. We think that when, if we want to create something, we've got to work really, really hard and we have in this material world. But when Krishna creates, he, he, he just goes into an enjoying mood. <coughs> uh, everything is done by his uh, potencies. Uh, so cha cha ram, the moving and the non-moving, often we hear these. But he creates this world. What is this world? It consists of two things, moving things and non-moving things. And Krishna says that they, the, everything moving is under my control and everything non-moving is under my control. So that's, ex that's all that's existing. There are some things moving and some things not moving. That's all that exists. And both those things are operating according to Krishna's will. So he doesn't have a big, big field of activities to, uh, uh, to worry about and a big, big problem. He just does two things, moving and um, moving. Oh, they're both my energies. I, do, I will, they will act or not act. So, Pariksit Maharaj asked Sukadeva Goswami again in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, why Krishna acts like apparently in an immoral way because he's God and he's supposed to set the standard, <coughs> yet he appears, you know, he's dancing with other men's wives in the middle of the night, he seems to be immoral. So why does he do that? Sukadeva Goswami immediately said, this simply testifies to his great power of independence. It's a testimony of his complete supremacy, his complete pot potency, his complete ability to do anything and everything he wants. He creates the laws of Dharma. He breaks the laws of Dharma. They're his laws he can make or he can break. So the law of immorality, that is Krishna's, is, that is from the Dharma Shastra, Krishna speaks that, the Dharma Shastra, but also he speaks the Bhakti Shastra. So he transgresses the laws of, normal laws of 
Dharma or religion. So this is supremacy. If someone else tries to do that, immediately they get locked up or put in prison or beaten up, something like that. Krishna does it against worship. You got a whole altar here with Krishna with eight gopis, nine gopis. And people are coming and worshipping and bowing down. It's immoral. Like the Krishna, the Ranchoji, the coward, he ran away from the battlefield when Jarasandha and Kaliyavana were attacking Mathura. Krishna says, Arjuna, your friends will scorn you, they'll speak unkind words to you, they'll call you a eunuch, they'll call you a coward, your sister-in-laws will all laugh at you, you'll be ridiculed. If he doesn't fight, if he's a coward, yet Krishna, he pulls off the battlefield and he looks like a coward. He's running away from Jarasandha as if he's scared. There's a temple in Gujarat, Ranchoji, Rancho, 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 the coward, <laughs> he's called the coward. They put him in the temple and to do worship to him. The Krishna said, people will scorn you, they will speak unkind words to you, Arjuna, if, you, if, you, if you're a coward. But when Krishna becomes a coward, put him on the altar, <laughs> offer puja every day, thousands of people come bowing down and worship him. Uh, so he is completely independent, completely free to do anything and everything. Why he does, we cannot say. But you know, Thakur says, what pleasure does Mahaprabhu get from defeating his teachers and the students? He's the Supreme Person that you got it. I swear he's got full opulence, knowledge, wealth, everything. He has full knowledge. He got complete, well, why, what, is he, what pleasure does he get arguing with his students and defeating all the teachers and getting... Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, I can't understand why he does such a thing. So we can't understand, but <laughs> somehow or another, if the Lord desires to do something, he gets pleasure with, he can do. We'll assist him in doing it any whatever he's doing with the system in whatever pleases Krishna. <coughs> so this is Krishna. Arjuna said, Krishna, can I show you a Vishru? Krishna said, okay, have a look. Vishru, the the encompassing the whole universe. You can't ask for anything more than that. You want to see something. You can't ask for anything more than that. Because it's the whole universe, the Vishru. Arjuna said, Krishna, can I see Vishnu? Krishna said, okay. No one's ever seen it before. Big thing, Krishna, okay. <laughs> Simple for Krishna. Oh, you're my friend, I'll show you. Nobody's seen before. Yogis, nobody can understand. Arjuna is a devotee. Krishna is pleased with him. Okay, I'll show you here. Have a look. <laughs> Shows him the universe before. <coughs> Uh, so all these things, they seem fantastic for the, uh, especially for the non-believers. And they are fantastic. And if they weren't fantastic, what would be the use of being God? If God wasn't fantastic, what's the use of being God? He's an ordinary person. No? They're, not, they're not fantastic. So if God was an ordinary person, he wouldn't be fantastic. <coughs> There's no meaning to God if he's not fantastic. He's like that. Prabhupada was like that. Wherever Prabhupada went, he, there would somehow or another be an adventure. Whatever it was. Bhavananda would say, Prabhupada, wherever you go, it's an adventure. Prabhupada, Prabhupada was laughing. And he, he's repeating how Bhavananda says, wherever we go is an adventure. <laughs> but it always used to stand up some of, you can expect it, you can expect Krishna is Phew, phew, Krishna, when he, Krishna walks into Mathura with Balaram, 
one adventure after another. They just first arrived in the city, they killed the washerman, cut his head off, <laughs> meet culture, meet the uh, Sudama, the f have a nice clothes, mate. They weren't taking a walk in there just through the street, but one after another, they had to kill a big elephant in Kualapidya. <coughs> uh, one after another, it's Krishna's always uh, Krishna's pure devotee also. Always a different adventure. Kakamuni uh, Maharaj was driving Prabhupada up the road here, he got to Bampuko. And uh, he's in the village there, he, he, he hit a bicycle. Bent the mud guard. It wasn't hard, but he just pushed. He bent the mud guard. So naturally, yeah, yeah, the cycle he, he starts shouting and screaming, Gargamuni. Then naturally, a big crowd comes round, and they're all shouting and shouting. And then Gargamuni doesn't speak Bengali or anything like that. Prabhupada sitting in the back. So then they realize they're not getting anywhere with Gargamuni because he doesn't speak Bengali. So they turn to Prabhupada. Tell him, you know, when he hit, our, he hit my bicycle, he bent the mic on. Prabhupada said, I'm only the passenger. <laughs> <laughs> Give him 10 rupees. <laughs> Gave him 10 rupees. Anyway, wherever Prabhupada went, it's like some little adventure would be there. <coughs> So, if, what's the use of being God if you're not, if you can't show all these wonderful things? That there's, a, there's a club in London called the Mentor Club. And you have to have a very, very high IQ to belong to this club. Very high IQ. So, they met with Prabhupada and they asked him a trick question. And they said, is God so great that he can create a mountain that is so big that he cannot lift it. And Prabhupada said, yes. They said, then he's not God. The Prabhupada said, then he can lift it. He can't lift it. Because he's God, he can do anything. So he created a mountain so big he can't lift it. Oh, then he's not God. He cannot lift it. If he cannot, then he can lift it. Practically we see. <laughs> Krishna was a boy, how he can lift Gova downhill? Impossible. But he lifted. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Krishna is not answerable to anyone. This is the. He, he, he can do anything and no one can question him. If he were answerable to us concerning why he does something and why he does not, his supremacy would be curtailed. <coughs> so, this is Krishna's position. He is not answerable to anyone, but everyone is answerable to him. What is the verse? Ekliha <coughs> Krishna, Arshabda Bhritya. That Krishna, he is the only master and everyone else is his servant, including Balaram and all the different incarnations. He is the only master and everyone else is his servant. That's his uh, Krishna's ultimate position. <coughs> so, Here in this material world, everyone is in utter ignorance of the, the self. The, Prabhupada said in the uh, Chaitanya Amrita, in the uh, Raghunathas, uh, no, Krishnadas Kaviraj, he's talking about Madan Mohan, the deity, his deity of Madan Mohan. Uh, uh, he says that. Everyone is utterly bound up in this material world. We're so dependent, we're not independent at all. It's like we cannot leave this room and go down to the temple independent of this body. No. But I'm not this body. 
But still, I'm utterly dependent on it to do everything. <coughs> so this is the position of the conditioned soul. We can completely bound up. <coughs> Though these, these ladies, these queens, they're lamenting, my dear husband, my dear husband, expecting he's going to come back to life or something. <coughs> Uh, but the Brahmana, the boy has come, Yamaraj, in the form of a small boy, he's come to enlighten them. Uh, you, you, you're lamenting for the, your husband. Uh, so he's giving them transcendental knowledge. If, you, if, if, I am not this, if you're not the body, then who is your husband? If I am not this body, who is my husband? If I am not this body, who is my wife? If I am not this body, who is my mother? If I am not this body, who is my father? Yet we all hold on to these identities. We value these identities. This person is my mother. This person is my father, my husband, my wife. <coughs> but if I am not this body, how can that person be my husband, my wife, my mother, my father? My son, my child. So this is the great illusion that's going on. Right now, it, at every moment. <laughs> But uh, nobody reveals it. Millions of newspapers coming out every day. Not one time, probably in the, since the existence of newspapers, has there ever been <laughs> one little even paragraph mentioning that, you know, you're not the body. Or <laughs> this is all that is, everything is moving according to the will of the Lord under his internal energy, Maya. Maya is. And we think we're not doing anything. We're being moved by this energy, completely dependent on energy. Not one time in any newspaper we get that. Since newspaper time immemorial. <coughs> so expert is Krishna. So expert. Even for a moment you cannot practically detect how Maya is working. Even for one second, she never stops. And we have to go along with it. Uh, but if we meet a pure devotee of Krishna, then we can change the whole consciousness, the Krishna consciousness. Uh, so that is neat. But it begins, at the basic point, it begins that I'm not this body. And then, from the, once you understand that, then you can start to understand other things. <coughs> In Prabhupada's purple to the Vyasatma Kabuddhi Ekiha Kurunandana verse, Prabhupada said, The whole process depends, however, on perfect knowledge of the soul beyond the body. Not theoretically, but practically. Then there's no more chance of falling into fruitive activity, sense gratification. Prabhupada's saying that the whole is dependent on knowing Krishna, not theoretically, but practically. The whole Krishna conscious process is based on this basic understanding. <coughs> uh, Shanadam Goswami, he approached Mahaprabhu, what was his first question? With a straw between his teeth, Amiki, who am I? Huh? I don't know who I am. People call me Pandit. He was Pandit. He, he was um, he was the uh, who was the Emperor Hussein Hussein Shah. He was a minister. You got to have a bit of brain to be a minister for the emperor. They're calling me Pandit. And also I speak Urdu, Farsi, Hindi, Sanskrit, Bengali, obviously. Very learned. And people are calling me, and I am actually believing, yes, I'm very, very learned. I'm Pandit. But actually I am such a fool, I do not know who I am. Uh, so this is how he approached Mahaprabhu. Therefore he is our Sambandha Acharya. This is our beginning in spiritual life. Go before the spiritual master and me. Admit we don't know anything. 
Uh, so then he can reveal the uh, whole science of Krishna consciousness. <coughs> uh, we have an eternal nature. We have to awaken to this. Krishna consciousness is an awakening process. We're awakening to our eternal nature. Kim tat brahma, kim adhyatma. Arjuna says, what is Brahman? What is the self? Krishna said, the living entity is Brahman. You are Brahman, aham brahmasmi. And his eternal nature, eternal nature, is called the self. So when we say self, myself, are we referring to our eternal nature or this temporary nature? The body is temporary, we know that. It's temporary nature. But Krishna said, the eternal nature is called the self. So understanding the eternal nature, that is called self-realization. <clears throat> understanding your eternal nature. Platform of eternality. This is where we that that is what we are, we are eternal. It's not something we're trying to attain, it's already there. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I can't remember exactly where, those who are done with lust, who, those who know how to surrender to Krishna, those who have tasted the eternal, I can't remember the shloka number, yeah, those who have tasted eternal, understood the eternal existence. Eternality, eternality is a substance and it's existing right now. This material energy is based on the eternal substance. But we can't perceive it at the moment. We're perceiving the non-permanent, not eternal substance. We're dealing with that. So this is the idea of waking up to that our eternal nature. And it goes under different names, Hambra Mashmi, I am spirit, Tatvamasi, thou art that, first searching for <coughs> Brahma Bhuta Prashanatma. Hmm. Joy from joy uh, coming from the soul. Chaito Darpanamajanam. Mahaprabhu's mission begins at this point. Hmm? He's come to glorify the holy name. Like the rising moon. Giving unlimited knowledge, unlimited bliss, unlimited satisfaction. But first, what, is, what does it start with? Sheto Dara Purnamajanam. First cleanse the heart. And then you'll be able to understand all these things. It's, a, it's eternally going on in the heart. Nitya Sita Krishna Prema. Love is there, Krishna is there, you are there. It's the relationship is there. It's covered. Nitya Krishna Prema. It's eternal, it's our eternal birthright. So Mahaprabhu's mission begins with it. He begins, first cleanse the heart, then you're gonna understand the reality. The reality of the name, the reality of Krishna, the reality of you are the you become the reality. That is what you are searching for. The jnani is they're searching. I am, it is. If you're a jnani, you will come to this conclusion. I am, it is. So I am what? What? It is what? Tattva Masi, thou art that. When you understand, I am that. I am that. That, that spirit. I am that. It is me. Then it's a complete awakening, a new, a new realized, awakening to a new realization, existence, a new, it's the oldest existence, eternal existence, but for us it's all new because we've been conditioned since time immemorial, so it's awakening to that eternal existence, our eternal <coughs> position, everything begins at that point, sambandha, making a contact with spirit, sambandha, <coughs> 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 
yeah, so many different names it goes under. But it's all the same thing, it's trying to take you out of the modes of material nature into the eternal world. So that is the solution to all the problems. Huh? Ignorance, we're forgetful of who we are. Arjuna at the end of Bhagavad Gita said, I have regained my memory by your mercy, Krishna. It means he understood who he, he regained his memory. I have regained my memory by your mercy, Krishna. And because I have regained my, the, I have gained my memory and my ignorance is gone, is dispelled. So this is the idea. When you regain your memory, your re eternal memory of who you are and living in that existence, then the ignorance is gone. First he regained his memory. My memory, I regained my memory by him and the illusion is gone, the ignorance is gone. <coughs> so, Krishna consciousness is waking up. We heard a few days ago someone quoted Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gaura Chandra Bole, Koto Nitra Jayo Maya. This is the Chiri. Wake up, wake up, wake up from the lap of the witch of Maya. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram. And without Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said all the other forms, even they're going to try to get you out of the modes of material nature. They won't be really successful until you take to Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, samaveda bhakti ki jai, Nithai go premanandi. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, she saw all the elements. She saw the whole, all the elements needed to create a universe. I don't know if she actually saw that form with the fearsome eyes and the time, and, but she saw all the elements there that were, were needed to create the universe. And also Krishna partially showed it to Duryodhan. Duryodhan, only partially. It just got big and but not as fierce as the one he showed Arjuna. Any comment, question? Thank you. Yes. Krishna reveals himself only to the one who chooses. But isn't it also a fact that Krishna wants to reveal himself fully to everyone? But he can't because we're not, we're not ready for it. On this side, he wants to reveal himself fully to everyone. Every, every single part and parcel he has. He has love equally for everyone. But he cannot do it because we're not, we don't want we don't want, we don't want to receive that revelation yet. So he has to wait. But on his side, he's ready to reveal himself to everybody. Is that true? Yes, very true. Rapa said, you take one step towards Krishna, he takes ten bounding leaps towards you. <laughs> oh, at last they turned my face to me, at last, he said. Krishna is so happy. But he says that I am conquered by the love of one who has conquered his mind. Many other ways he's conquered also, but that one. <coughs> Yeah, we put ourselves in the position. See, we can't touch spirit. We can't deal with spirit at the moment. But we can deal with the modes of material nature. That we can do. So that we're doing in this process of sana. We can clean the act up, the material act. We can clean that up. Because we can directly deal with that. Kam, pro, logamo. We have a direct 
relationship. Spirit, we, we don't, it's out of touch. So we can, what we do know, is most of the material, that we can purify, that we can clean up. And we put ourselves in a pure condition that when Krishna is feeling very liberal to this Buddhist mercy, you're going to be the one that, who can receive it. We try hard to do it. Prabhupada said, it's the duck who quacks the loudest gets the bread. The ducks are walking in the park, he's throwing bread, but the one who's quacking loudly, and he gets right out the front, he, makes, he gets more bread. Eh? So we should be anxious. Should be very anxious to uh, receive the mercy of Krishna. Whatever it takes, we should quack, 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 quack. Somehow or another, quack the loudest so Krishna bestows his mercy. <coughs> if, if Krishna's devotees recommend also Krishna, he is obligated by his devotees. What once Guru Das asked Prabhupada here, in, in, Prabhupada in his room. He said, but what does it actually mean, Prabhupada, uh, Guru Kripa? What does it actually mean, mercy of Guru? And Prabhupada started rubbing his head, Guru Das' his head. He said, no, no, but what does it mean, Prabhupada? It actually mean Guru Kripa. And Prabhupada was pulling his seeker and his whistling like this. No, Prabhupada, what, what does it mean? And Prabhupada was just smiling. And, <laughs> Somehow or another you get the favor of the guru and the guru people. Put yourself in a position to be recognized by Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.